Hey, what's up guys? It's Slick here. I'm back again with another video. And this one, covering a topic that I get asked quite a bit. It's sort of a series of videos that I'm trying to make and have made in the past of frequently asked questions. Such that when people ask me a question that I get a lot, you know, like, what is your favorite Arkham game? I can just refer them to a video and they can sort of, you know, uh, get a better glimpse. Instead of me just answering, you know, my favorite Arkham game, in, in case you're wondering, is Batman Arkham Knight? That's the question I get a lot. And to be truthful, you know, I get it like every single day it comes to a point where you know, also I don't really think about you know which is my favorite or really think about it in that way so you know it gets a little it doesn't get annoying because I understand that people are new to the channel they don't know me or anything like that but you know which Batman game is your favorite um, Marvel or DC who's your favorite um, superhero by the way it's Batgirl so like questions like that I've made videos on I made my top five favorite superheroes so I can just be like yo you just check it out if you want to know um, I don't mean it in a way as like oh just watch my video instead and, and make sure you watch that at the beginning too I don't mean it like that but it is one of those things where like there's so there's I'm going to a size where there's questions that I get literally every day and there's a way hopefully now that people can get the answers to a lot of the frequently asked questions that I get um, if you're curious about them and my thoughts on things. And in this video, I'll be covering which do I prefer, Marvel Comics or DC Comics as a brand. And um, I, I guess we'll just go ahead and jump right into it and which I um, prefer. And a lot of you guys probably know um, just because, you know, what I cover a lot on my channel and that sort of thing. Something to be noted is that I did grow up a, a Marvel kid. Actually, um, you know, the person that got me into comic books was all into Marvel as well. And I didn't read DC Comics until way, way later in life. Uh, I said that life like I'm like 60 or something. I don't know. But yeah, like way later is, is when I first read DC Comics. I read a few Batman books, like kid, you know, comics when I was like eight. But largely I read a lot of Spider-Man when I was a kid. And I still do read a lot of Spider-Man. And I do like reading Marvel Comics um, uh, quite a bit. But... I don't buy brand new Marvel comics very much. You know, there's a few things that I want to read, like Venom and stuff like that. But large in part, um, I almost considered buying um, Inhumans versus X-Men, I believe, is a series right now. But um, overall, I have refrained from from doing that. And really because it's a monetary issue. And I have $20 a week that I budget to buy comics. And I happen to, to have a lot of interest in what Rebirth is going on right now. And there's, there's so many books that I want to read in Rebirth. I have to cut with $20 that I don't really get into the Marvel side of things for Rebirth. So the answer is um, I do have a preference towards DC Comics and they are, uh, if, if I could only, you know, the, the question is if you could only have one forever and, um, you, you know, the other one just drops off the face of the earth, um, I would have DC Comics be the one that, that stays, I guess. And for the, I suppose the biggest reason is most of my favorite characters are DC Comics characters. And that's something I only realized in the past year because... You know, again, as I started doing this on YouTube, that's a question you get a lot. Otherwise, I didn't really think about it all that much. But as I began to think about it more and more, you know, who are my favorite superheroes, right? I mean, Batgirl, Batman, Superman, Supergirl. Uh, I like Wonder Woman a lot. I like Green Arrow. You know, a lot of my favorite heroes are um, DC. Not to say that, you know, Spider-Man and, and stuff like that and, um, you know, Wolverine, X-23 and characters like that aren't up there because they absolutely are. But it is something to be noted that I would say probably my top five out of my top five heroes, which I also made a video on. You can check that out. They're all DC heroes. Um, and that's that's just a coincidence i mean it's not because i i you know don't am not exposed to marvel heroes that's just the fact of it is that's just how it how it sort of uh, how the how it boiled down basically um so also how well, well i want to break down this video i want to go into like the different subsets of each company right now and why i think dc is is hot right now and um and not that marvel isn't because marvel's probably hotter than dc is from a mainstream perspective but in terms of like my preferences right so first of all animation and anim animated films and television shows um i i think dc even you know it's, it's hard to objectively state that marvel's winning in this front really i mean animated films they're, they're killing it. DC's killing it. Now, <laughs> Batman Bad Blood and The Killing Joke, a lot of people didn't like those. I happen to like Bad Blood. I didn't like uh, The Killing Joke because I'm a big Barbara Gordon fan, okay? So it kind of goes 360 with why I didn't like that film. But uh, overall, I've never seen a bad DC animated movie. Even though I don't like The Killing Joke and think it's like abhorrent and like I want to vomit when I see it uh, sort of thing, it's still a well-made film. Don't get me wrong. And all of the DC animated films, as far as I'm concerned, are great. I mean, Justice League vs. Teen Titans looks great. Justice League Dark looks amazing. I mean, I just cannot wait to see what they've got come uh, down the turnpike with DC. 
and all the other films that they made in the past are, are just great. Even like Justice League War, which people will tell you are terrible. It's, I mean, I think they're great films. I love the DC animated movies. I've never seen a bad one, even though, uh, again, I have issues with the killing joke. But otherwise, you know, Marvel, I'm just not really sure. Like, I, I mean, I can't say I don't like their films. I haven't really seen many of them. They're, they're, they seem to have a less priority to, to, um, to animated stuff, right? And, and their MCU seems to be something that's really important to them. So that's something to consider. I mean, if, if we're keeping score here, 1 0 DC in my book. Animation DC definitely wins. And then let's talk about games, where, where it's very clear as well that DC Comics would, will, will take the lead there with the Batman Arkham games, the best superhero video game franchise ever made. And then also picking back on that, you know, Batman, the Telltale series, and stuff like that. And even some, some decent, uh, you know, mobile games and stuff like that you can get into. Uh, compare that to Marvel, which has been um, publishing some really lackluster games recently, like The Amazing Spider-Man, which I just got The Amazing Spider-Man 2. By the way, I don't even know if it's bad. I, I haven't played it yet, but that's what people have said, and objectively speaking, whereas objectively, the Batman Arkham games are very good, you know, 92% IGN rating and stuff like that. So people really like uh, the Batman Arkham games, and I do as well, obviously. Um, and I really look forward to Injustice 2 and what WB Games Montreal is working on. And then I look at Marvel, which is really turning around the game's front. And I'm excited to see that. And that's the, the way I want it. I want both companies to be putting out great stuff. And I think that 2017 could be the year that Marvel actually has a better year than DC Comics does in terms of their games. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom is big, but sort of an exception because it's not just a Marvel game, you know what I mean? Uh, but Spider-Man PS4, I think, is going to be uh, a contender for the best superhero video game ever made. I do mean that very genuinely. I think that it it can very easily um, be the best superhero video game ever made. I'm, I'm a strong believer that it really, really can be. I, I think it can beat the Arkham games, and I'm a very, very strong proponent of that. We're dealing with Insomniac Games, an incredibly talented developer, and I really have a lot of hope for that game, and I think it's going to be stellar. Now, I don't know if it's going to come out in 2017. I don't know if the Batman game is coming out in 2017. Nobody knows. So... That's something to consider, not speculate on that. But yes, in terms of games, up to this point, DC, I think, um, takes takes the edge there. And, and by the way, you know, amazing games from, from Spider-Man mainly, you know, like in Spider-Man 2 and stuff like that. I mean, some great games in the past, but... But um, you can't really hang with the Arkham games and Batman the Telltale series. And even if we get into Vertigo, you know, Fables from Telltale games, stuff like that. I mean, great, great stuff. So... 2-0, if, again, if we're keeping store. Then movies. Uh, this is going to be really controversial, if not the whole premise of me just preferring DC over uh, over Marvel is, which, which it might be in and of itself. But for me, I prefer the DC movies, and I, I enjoy them more. Um, not to say I don't like the Marvel movies. I mean, I, I remember being mesmerized by the first Avengers, and I do like most of the Marvel films. However... Uh, the, the the formula is wearing on me a little bit, and not the formula really narratively. It's it's more so stylistically, right? And there's a lot of videos that have come out talking about the color gradient and stuff like that in the films. It, but also, I, I think a lot of the, each movie sort of is the same stylistically, as I said. And uh, I, I don't buy the the notion that like each Marvel director is 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 very much so in control of their own film. And and I compare that to the DC movies, which are stylistically very distinct, and the director's visions are are very clearly coming through on that. Um, not to say that the films weren't butchered in the editing group. I don't know. I'm not going to theorize about that. But I look at the Marvel movies. They're all pretty much the same, like, stylistically, once again, with, with the score, the way the score works, and the coloring, and stuff like that. Um, not totally or narratively. I get that. They're all very different. But that's just my perspective on it. Uh, I like movies with great scores and cinematography. I think that soundtrack is very important to film. And a lot of my favorite movies have really great soundtracks and scores. And the Dark Knight trilogy is no exception. And then all of the um, the DCEU films are no exception either. I, I love, um, you know, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. And, you know, I, I see a movie like Doctor Strange. I enjoy it. Uh, but I'm not, like, rushing to go buy the Doctor Strange comics that are coming out right now. And, and you, you know, that sort of thing. If you sort of... Picking up my drift on it. I like the Marvel movies, but I love the DC movies. Um... And uh, currently, you know, the last few years of Marvel movie. I mean, I like Age of Ultron, but again, it's not one that I like want to rewatch every other month or anything like that. And Batman v Superman is a film that I want to rewatch every other month because it has a rewatchability factor from the incredible score and cinematography that I really value in movies. So from my preferences, although I will concede that probably objectively speaking, the Marvel movies are better in terms of like critical acclaim and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of what I prefer, I love the, um, the DC live action films and I can't wait for Wonder Woman and Justice League, nor can I, you know, I'm excited for Thor Ragnarok and stuff like that, but not to the same degree, if, if, if you get what I'm saying. So, 
Finally, I want to talk about the comics. This is going to be um, sort of, I, I think I've got everything right. Like animated movies, the games, and then the live action films. Uh, there might be something I'm missing. I don't know. But some other medium of entertainment, right? But, but comics is really important because these are all comic book characters. They're made, every superhero is created, except for a few of them, like Harley Quinn, who's not a superhero. But you get the point. You know, some heroes in the comic book realm are created in film or television and adapted to comic books but to be truthful every comic book character is intended to be portrayed in comic book stories batman was created to be a comic book character not one to be in film he was in um or, or television he was in a comic book long before he was in film or tv and these characters all of them even recent ones were designed and made and and their stories are best highlighted in comic books and i believe that comic books is the premier format for um for comic book entertainment or or you know superhero entertainment rather because all these superheroes are made to be comic to be in comic books they're, they're comic book stories comic book characters and that's something that's important to to consider even though i do love the films and animation and games and stuff like that nothing can beat a good superhero comic book the way that i see it but in regards to the comics marvel i think has had a few missteps as of late in my personal opinion in regards to uh their characters they do weird stuff like um, none of the heroes are actually like the heroes that we know. And what I mean by that is like, I, I'm reading a Spider-Man comic and I do like getting Spider-Man back issues. It was a Dan Slott book and I liked renewing your vows and stuff like that from earlier. But then the newest renewing your vows where he's like a, a millionaire and he's super rich and there's all these other Spider-Men involved. I don't even know their names. Okay. And I consider myself somewhat well-versed in comic books. So I don't even know who these people are. These other Spider-Men, um, here i have no clue and there's like eight spider men and there's all these spider girls too and just like i can't keep up with it i don't know what the hell's going on i just want a good peter parker story maybe throw in mj and stuff like that which i did get a renewing your vows from 2015 i believe it is but you know and even so like we look at the hulk it's not the hulk you know it's not bruce banner okay and uh captain Mar I, I don't even think it's you know i don't think it's captain america being captain america i mean riri williams is iron man iron heart girl person so you know, I mean, I don't know who Riri Williams is. I don't have any attachment to her. Now, if you sort of edge her in, in a story that I'm otherwise interested in, and I become to like her, then maybe I'll read it. But otherwise, I don't know who that is. I, I don't really have an interest in that character. So therein, I'm not going to read the book. But then I look at what Rebirth is doing, and Rebirth seems to me to be a return to the classics. And, and by that, I mean, there's exceptions, right? I mean, as I've ranted about, Nightwing... Okay, so the whole staple of, of Rebirth is, like, back to the basics, you know, bring back what the fans love, and then, like, in the first few issues, he's a spy again. It's like, what? Okay, but large in part, right, large in part, 99% of the time, it is a return of what we love about these characters and a realignment for the New 52, which, by the way, I did really like, and I like... I think it really benefited female characters, by the way, like Supergirl and Batgirl. They really benefit from a more darker, um, in my opinion, because, you know, I don't want to read, you know, some chick flick or, you know, teen teen girl you know popcorn candy whatever that you know stuff like that and that's why i don't read supergirl and rebirth because i didn't like it but i love it in the new 52 because i think it's sort of um you know more accessible to adult and male audiences but anyway long story short the comic books i'm loving rebirth and again i really like the new 52 some of the, my favorite stories from dc comics are from the new 52 i think it's so excessively and and tires it's so tiresome how that film or how that event was basically trashed for no reason um and not to say that marvel comics are bad i don't read them I, as i said i got 20 dollars a week and i like i gotta i gotta read nightwing i gotta read batman i've gotta read wonder woman i've gotta read batgirl i've gotta read this i've gotta read aquaman i've gotta read green arrow and then sure enough i have no money left okay so it's like well i guess re re williams iron heart has to wait yeah i'm not buying i don't have any money left so you know, that's something to consider. It's just like, what takes priority of me? Again, a lot of my favorite heroes are from DC Comics. It's not that I don't want to read Marvel Comics. Um, you know, I, I've always considered getting like a Marvel Now sort of thing. But but overall, I love both Marvel and DC Comics. But again, if I could only have one for the rest of my life, it would be DC. But as I said, I grew up a Marvel kid. So in 10 years, 
uh, you know, am I not going to be reading any DC and I'm, all my pull is going to be Marvel? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think that I'm probably a DC kid for life now. But, um, you know, after my experience in the in the past few years, um, it, that's probably the case. And, and I look at my comic book collection, whereas it was all Marvel beforehand, it's, it's, um, it's, it's very heavily so DC Comics now because I've just, I've really gone to cons and just try to get back issues of DC and, and, um, and, you know, I just really love the DC brand as a whole, and I like Marvel too. Uh, I've said that. I'm going to speak in circles now, so I'll just go ahead and end the commentary here. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you could only have one for the rest of eternity. If one drops off the face of the earth, who are you kicking off the ship, DC or Marvel? Let me know your thoughts on the comments section below. My name is Slickmoth. Hopefully, you stay civilized down there. I'll see you guys in the next one.